This is another in our series of discussions about innovation in the medical field in Israel, in particular with the biologists and researchers at the Institute for Medical Research, Israel Canada. Welcome to the show. Hi. My guest is Ofer Mandelborn. Uh, you're a key researcher in this place. Can you briefly describe, you're doing molecular research and it has implications for sickness and health. We'll get into those, mm -hmm. but tell me first how you came to do your research in this molecular biology field. So I was, I was actually born here in Jerusalem. Yeah. Uh, then I did my PhD at the Weizmann Institute. And then from 95 to 99, I was at the US in Harvard in the laboratory of Jake Strominger. He's a very famous guy. He is a very famous guy. This guy, actually, he's now 85 years old. He discovered the mechanism of action of penicillin and then, did, and then moved from uh, the penicillin work to study immunology. And I see. But that, that's a big credit to you to be accepted into his lab, I Yeah, I was, I was very fortunate uh, yeah. to be accepted to his lab. Uh, he's, he's, he's also uh, Jewish, by the way. And, and then I spent four wonderful years uh, and in Jack's lab, I was uh, I get I learned how to study anchor cells, the natural killer cells, the cells that I'm working on today. Yeah, these are NKs. Well, okay, let's describe what an NK cell is, this natural killer. By the way, we should say that uh, when I was first in, I was told it's Killer Mandelborn. <laughs> I thought this is a tough guy, <laughs> and I learned he's a paratrooper. So it's a really tough guy, but that isn't why you were called Killer. <laughs> right. So these cells, actually, we'll see later on that these cells are not only killer cells, they also uh, help pregnancy. But they were discovered in the 70s, actually by Swedish scientists. And he noticed that these cells could kill tumor cells and virus-infected cells without any activation. So that's why he named them natural killer cells. So they can naturally kill uh, tumor cells and viruses. And back then, people didn't know how to identify them, how to work with them, and today we know quite a lot about uh, these cells. They're very different. Um, they operate very differently in doing this killing of viruses, etc., than, say, when you get a macrophage and that. They, they seem to kill the cell even, don't they? Right. It's so not just the, the invader. Or right. So actually, they are one of the first line of defense. So when, when people Is get into the infantry? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so people, but, but they're kind of more, maybe more sophisticated. So, so, so when, when, you are, when we are being attacked by, by a pathogen, for example, yeah. so they start to operate about, so the first cells to actually tackle maybe the simple infantry are the macrophages. Right. They stay a bit behind the NK cells and wait about 24 hours, and then they move to the site of entry. And then they can recognize specifically uh, tumor cells, virus infected cells, bacteria and parasites, and then they will kill these invaders to protect us from, I don't know, uh, these first enemies. So, but this second layer, how, they essentially, what, exude some kind of poison that doesn't kill the rest of the tissue, just the tissue right. directly involved. Right, so that, that's one of the things that we are working on. So they have a special set, so how could they discriminate between the uh, self and non-cells yeah. between uh, enemy and, and regular healthy cells, they have special receptors that, that are programmed to, to recognize uh, uh, many different pathogens. So they move to the, so, so they've been attracted to the site of injury uh, within 24 hours. Then they recognize specifically the cells which are infected, let's say, with the virus, and can kill these infected cells in a direct hit. So they bind, they bind to the cell and recognize the foreign cells with their receptors, with their proteins, and then just deliver the little hit and kill the cell. It's heat that kills it. Heat. No, the little heat. It hit, is hit. Oh, I it's, <laughs> it's your Hebrew yeah. English accent. So what, but they hit them with what, a protein? A yeah, so, so, protein? So, they have, uh, so they kind of form a sign-up. So they recognize, so they have, you have two, uh, you have the NK cells and, and the invader. They recognize the invader via special receptors and they, they deliver cytotoxic granules into this, uh, towards the uh, infected cells, for example, and simply kill it within 10 minutes. The cell is completely dead. You know, when I read this stuff, 
because I write on just war theory. So I think of this, does this have any application by some you know, anal analogy to just war theory? Because they're, they just wipe everything out. Right. They wipe it clean, as I understand right. from reading the But papers. it has specificity. So they will recognize only infected cells, all tumor cells. They will not kill normal cells, otherwise we will be facing a problem of autoimmunity. Right. In fact, we have recently found out that they are kind of important even during type 1 diabetes. So during diabetes development, they also uh, come in contact with the beta cells, we don't know why, of the pancreas, and just start to kill them. Really? And they contribute to diabetes development, yeah. So I see. So, so, so when, when something get, gets strong, they can be really dangerous. They can kill within a few minutes. Our own parts of our body exactly. start killing the... Exactly. So the lymph, oh, I didn't know that at all. Yeah. I remember my first lecture when I was in medical school on was a, fir a great lecture came in for Chicago and taught yeah. us about because uh, 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 diabetes is a big thing in Toronto because of b Banting and Beth's. Mm -hmm. So he taught us how it works and insulin, etc. And after all these years, nobody knows how it works. Exactly. And, exactly. and yet he taught you know how much they did and how it worked. And so we just discovered yeah. that ankylosis really comes there as well. I mean, together with the T cells and Kill, that are killing the beta cells. And so if, you will tr if we will be able to try to find ways to block the action of NK cells, maybe we can, I don't know, help diabetics. 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 I see. But you are, your big breakthrough paper came through. You have had a meteoric career since you've left Harvard. Hmm. Maybe you had one at Harvard, I don't hmm. know. But uh, when I read the papers, everybody cites this 2006 paper right. in which you radically changed the paradigm right. of NK cells. Because right. you read all the papers, and I'm a total amateur, and they seem they're just killers. Right. And you discover they're not just killers. They do something quite creative. Right. Uh, Actually, this, this work was inspired by a Canadian uh, researcher by the name of Anne Croy. Anne Croy? Yes. So actually, Where does uh, she work? She, she now, I think, she used to be in Toronto, but I think she moved now. I see. Um, so actually, she discovered about uh, 20 or more years ago that in the mouse, uh, so, so there, is a, there is a really amazing question. Uh, how come pregnancy survives? So the fetus, half of the genetic code is coming from the father. Oh, so it's a foreign substance. Uh, exactly, it's a foreign substance. So how does so the woman tolerate it? Exactly, how does the woman tolerate it? So there are, many, there are many answers to this. But maybe one of the answers is that in the point of contact between mom and baby, yeah. There are no immune cells. But this is not the case. In the point of contact between mom and baby, there are immune cells. But the majority of these cells are, uh, it's completely amazing, are natural killer cells. And no one really knows and uh, knew what they are doing. There. When was it discovered that the majority So this was discovered uh, maybe 30 uh, years ago oh, uh, by uh, a woman from uh, Cambridge, Ashley Murphy. So she kind of noticed that in the point of contact between mom and baby, there are large cells, which are anchor cells, and no one really knows what they are doing there. Then Ancor showed in the mouse that that um, that maybe these anchor cells help to uh, help the fetus the fetus to grow. Uh, but pregnancy in mouse is completely different than humans, and. And because of that, and also the research in humans is quite difficult. So because of that, until we, uh, I don't know, uh, found out, I think we published our paper, no one really know what's going on in, in, uh, in humans. So what We don't want to get into your paper yet. Because okay. you have to take a break. Okay. And we'll hold everybody in suspense on okay. this great revelation that okay. comes from your research and how you came about. Okay. It. Okay, so we'll take the break now. Okay.